Hello, Namaskar and once again a very good evening to all the viewers watching our session. This is Simran Singh and you are watching this particular session on Evidya channel number 6 to 12. Besides, you can also watch the live stream of this particular Sahyog session on our YouTube channel that is NCRT official. So, it's around 5 p.m. on your watch and regularly from Monday to Friday is at this particular timing that is right from 5 p.m. till 5.30. We have our very special sessions known as Sahyog. Guidance for mental well-being and psychosocial support for all the students and viewers watching our sessions out there. So here we come up with certain important significant topics for all our viewers. You must be willing to know what are we going to discuss in today's session. Well, it's all about assertiveness as a core communication skill and providing and highlighting more details for all our viewers in this session we have with us our two guests. So allow me to introduce you with our today's guest of the evening. Here we have with us Dr. Sarjubala Devi, Madam. Namaskar, Ma'am. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. We welcome you in this conversation. Ma'am is from Niti Shillong NCRT. Then we are also joined by a practicing counselor, Mrs. Mistu Dev, Madam. Namaste, Ma'am. Namaste, Ma'am. Good evening, Ma'am. We welcome you in the conversation with open arms. All the viewers watching our session here are two different mediums to which you can connect with us. The first one is our contact number and it is 8800-440-559 and a specific mail id of sahyog is sahyog.ncrt at the rate ciet.nic.in. So without further ado, let's begin this conversation on assertiveness as a core communication skill. So in the first place, I would like to invite Dr. Sarjubala Madam in the conversation and ask her what is communication skill and what are the different types of communication? Thank you, Sir. Thank you for having me there. So, communication is a process. If we talk about communication, it is a process of exchange of thoughts, feeling, information, and knowledge. There will be two partners, maybe individual or maybe in groups. What they will be doing is they will be communicating a message through a medium. Medium may be either spoken messages or written messages. And they are what happened. Communication, when we talk about real, you know, interlocuting partners, when they negotiate, that comes into a meaning. That is very important, as an important aspect of communication. It is not just A speaking, B listening, and B responding something. But rather, what is the importance in communication? It is, it is about negotiating meaning. The kind of outcome that has to be built upon by in agreement with the speaker and hearer. That is very important. It is a two-way process. And accountability, as we say that we are going to come out into an outcome, accountability of for the speaker, that means the sender and the receiver will have, been, will have to be accountable. Both has to be active listener until and unless one is, you know, both are actively listening on what the other person is speaking the viewpoints that there will be gaps in the message has been sent and if there is a gap in the message communication will break down and through proper communication what we get is it, it is a foundation of the positive human relationship if we talk about it a little bit psychologically it is about building a relationship building a positive human relationship until and unless you have an effective communication building positive human relationship is a little bit difficult. That's why we say communication is very difficult. Coming to the types of communication, how do we communicate? There are four different types of communication which we normally see. The first one is passive communicators. Mm -hmm. they have, what they do, they have something in their mind, but they won't be expressing. And how we can observe them is they avoid expressing. The, one, the ultimate thing which they normally do is avoiding expression. They normally have a short voice, overtly agreeing. Since they are not going to put forward their viewpoints, they will be just agreeing to what the other partner is saying. And since they are not speaking out, we really don't know what is going on. Otherwise, the messages are like, mm, I'm not very sure about it. Or maybe if you think that is fine, probably that would be fine. That is the way they will be communicating. And aggressive are those people who are demanding who take, you know, control of the position. Since we say that communication is a negotiation, it is a dialogue. The partner, the interlocuting partner, or both the partners who are indulging into the communication, they have to be able to express their viewpoints. But with an aggressive person, what happens is they try to dominate. 
the situation. They use lots of you language, means whatever is happening, they have a habit of accusing the other person. And otherwise, in certain cases, they say, I say it, that's why it has to be correct. That is how they talk about in aggressive nature. Then passive aggressive, again, this is also a kind of communication where the partner, the listener especially, they seem to be agreeing, but what? But in reality, they are not agreeing what the other person is saying. But they will not be expressing it directly. They will be just keeping it down and they will say, they will try to negotiate his viewpoint through someone or they will say that ah, it will not be happening. That is what is not supposed to be happening. And mm -hmm. this is like they do lots of criticize, criticism and sarcastic is, you know, mm -hmm. remarks. Oh, you feel so? That's how, like that. So then assertive, in the assertive type of communication, what is observed is, you know, assertion is about taking initiative, listening attentively, because they have to negotiate. They have to understand what the uh, viewpoint of the other person, that's why they speak it up, and it is direct, it is constructive, that is an honest comment, and solution focus. What is important here in assertive uh -huh. communication is the kind of communication which he or she is doing is, you know, solution focus. Right? There are people whom we see, whom we came across that they come out with the problems and solutions are left to the other person who is listening, who haven't really seen the kind of situation problem, you know. So they just leave it, but for the assertive mm -hmm. kind of people, they say directly, they say that this is the point where I'm not agreeing with, this is the point where I'm seeing a problem. This is why the project is not going for something like that. And this is requests. Those person, those assertive person, they also make requests and they respect respect the other. They respect the other as well as they protect their integrity. These are the four types of communication. So they, having, they like. yeah. So having heard the different types of communication and the meaning of communication skill. I think the assertiveness is the best one out of the lot. So let's get to know more about it from our practicing counselor, Ms. Su, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, we would like to ask you what is assertive communication style and uh, why is it so important, especially for adolescents? Thank you so much, ma'am, first of all, for asking me this question. Assertiveness means expressing one's point of view in such a way that it should be clear and direct. It means there should not be any kind of confusion. I mean, no confusion and no hesitation in between while talking to another person. And being assertive means uh, being honest about your own opinion, uh, uh, about your own uh, thinking. I mean, uh, your uh, uh, your feelings and about your own rights. What we are supposed to do, what we can do. What are our rights? It's all about uh, all these things. So being assertive means how much clear you can think and how much clear you can communicate with another person in a proper way. I mean, if a person is uh, assertive, sometimes it's feel like how uh, Sarju Malavam has uh, described, like sometimes a person who is aggressive, uh, other people can think he is harmful or he is uh, trying to do some kind of mess with some other person. His behavior sometimes show aggressiveness. But if a person can observe himself or herself uh, properly, and if he or she can follow few things, then um, assertiveness can deal with, uh, I mean, it's a skill to improve a, a person. Uh, if a child can grow up with a proper way, I mean, how to follow this assertiveness as a skill, then he or she can become a confident, a confident person in their later life and which can deal, um, they can deal with this uh, throughout their life and that will be helpful for uh, making a career um, for them. So if a person can follow a few things like uh, uh, take care of their voice while speaking to the teacher, if we teach a student how to talk in front of the teacher or the seniors, with a, a low volume or while speaking there he or she should think about um, uh, to empathetic uh, while talking to another person and be mindful about um, his own body language so uh, there are few things if a child is following all these things and then he or she can become um, uh, assertive uh, i mean a good 
human being in their later life and which will be helpful so these are the uh, these are few things if a person can follow uh, and this is the meaning of assertiveness uh, and how much it is important yes it is very much important uh, for a child um, uh, developing one's assertiveness may help to develop communication skill if a child is having good communication skill then he or she can achieve a success in their life like how uh, they can make a good relationship with their teachers with seniors with parents with the society members with another person or with whom they are meeting anywhere uh, they can make a good group and they can um, uh, later on they can work as a team uh, there won't be any kind of uh, problem for them to deal with all these things so communication is very important if the child is having assertiveness in him or her then he or she will become a confident person and confidence can uh, let him to take uh, some other way and he can uh, be uh, like or participate in some kind of competitions one can feel confident and they he or she can uh, achieve success uh, through different kind of competitions and uh, better for uh, that would be better for their future steps and increase self esteem and the child can uh, get self esteem in he, him or her and uh, i mean this things will take him uh, and they can improve his future in such a way um, he can uh, overcome many difficulties which he or she may get in his uh, life uh, to uh, go towards his future so this kind of uh, skills can helpful if the child is um, accepting uh, the positive Vibes or positive ways of assertiveness. Thank you, ma'am. So uh, this clearly means that when we talk about clarity and directness in the approach, uh, whenever we talk about communication skills, so how important is assertiveness in our lives? And at the same time, it is important to exhibit these qualities. So, Sarju Bala, ma'am, I would again request you to apprise our viewers about how we can inculcate. the qualities like uh, assertiveness or speaking with clarity especially in the adolescent phase of our lives yes so why because you know to be assertive to be assertive is the goal is the process through which you are going to get your goal and also it is the time in adolescence it is a time that they are having confusion on decision making the happier pressure they have all those sorts of thinkings you know they are just transacting transforming from childhood to day from the support system they are just coming out from their comfort zone where the parents are keeping keeping them now what they is the what they do is is they grow up what they feel about themselves is you know they feel like you know risk requesting is by showing my weakness that is what they feel and saying no to a friend is very rude that is what they sometimes feel and since they were in the comfort zone what they whatever they wanted they were being given that's why they feel the world is beautiful but when they see somebody rejecting themselves them or somebody not accepting whatever their proposal is then they feel very upset and they are very confused and they are not able to take decision in that point that's why there are certain assertive myths like they say that sometimes some people they just go down being introvert and say that the problem is with me and it is not with others they just accept themselves to be a lower individual but next slide ma'am please to move to the next slide and what they need to know what they need to understand about themselves is each individual have a right to ask what they want whether it is fulfill or not that we will have to see but the right is there for her or him to be asking what they want and they have every right to say no they have every right to say that you know i am they are not responsible for others feelings emotions and actions but what the person has to do is their right they have to be clearly told they have to be clearly taught that this is out of your control what you have to have is you have a control you have under under control of yourself you have to understand your situation you have to make your point confidently in a clear and precise manner 
so that the other person, other inter reporting partner or communication partner, will not misunderstood you and misguide you in whatever the way. But you have to assess the kind of situation where you have to speak up and how you have to speak up. There are three C's in communication, uh, assertive communication. Please move to the next slide. So in the, there will be three C's which we need to teach us. Adolescence, that is confidence, clear and control. So every time, many a time, what happened to our adolescents is when they are disturbed, when they are being said no, when they are getting some negative remark, what they say is they lose their control. They are filled with the emotions and they started putting upon the emotions, but it's not the way to be assertive. What they have to be, to make oneself assertive, what they have to do is like, they have to have a control of their emotions and they have to put forward with confidence in a clear manner. That is very important. The steps which they can follow is, their man is an acronym, where they can do is describe the situation without an emotion. Say for example, Adolescents, a kind of a, a, let's say some A is interested to become a classical musician. And in class, say, say for example, in class 11, class 11, then they, okay, so it has to be given for coaching in Z, when, for G, when C says that C has to describe that I wanted this, then express, express the emotion. We always feel many a times adolescents as well as we think that, you know, emotions, this thing, others also will have understood my situation that is not there, then they have to assert and reinforce what they want. When they, they practice this, describe, express, assert, and reinforce, it's very likely that they will get their goal. That is what we have to teach right from the beginning by practicing them, requesting, by practicing them to say no in certain situation. Let them allow to practice their assertive message little while and they will be able to. Of course, and uh, in this significant conversation, we still have around five to seven minutes left. So viewers, for any queries, any messages, please drop your comments in the comment section of NCRT official. So when we are talking about being assertive, especially for the adolescents or the students watching our sessions, I do believe that an important responsibility is to be borne by our parents, by our schools and also by our guides. So, Mr. Ma'am, any tips or strategies with the help of which our uh, guides could actually help in developing these qualities like assertive communication, clear and direct communication within the students or the children? Mr. Ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Actually, uh, it's the responsibility next of the slide. teachers. It's very the next slide. Yes, it's the responsibility of the teachers and the parents uh, to teach our children um, what are the things and the strategies they can follow and uh, to uh, become an assertive person and or uh, this uh, kind of good positive things in their life, which they can implement and they can uh, follow their lives in such a way that um, this uh, would be helpful for them. Um, so uh, if the teacher not only teach uh, some subjects, they also teach the moral responsibility to teach the students the impart of essential life skills to students. So uh, they are useful for their personal lives also. So a teacher can teach uh, a student uh, in classroom and they can express like how to deal uh, that you should be um, mindful throughout the class and you should give attention and you should listen properly and these are some important things in uh, in a classroom a teacher can teach I mean all the time we as a teacher tell the student please listen to us please listen to us if the child is uh, fully mindful during the class and then uh, the child is listening to the teacher properly, then he or she can learn few things, few strategies like eye contact while teaching in the class. Uh, when the teacher is looking at a particular child uh, while expressing something, that love, the children also learning these things that while talking, while communicating with other person, we have to look at the person's eye. This eye contact is very important. Then the second thing is voice, voice modulation while talking to teach uh, how we need to talk while talking to our peers and while talking to our um, uh, parents, while talking to our uh, siblings, how we uh, 
um, should module our uh, voice. Then another thing is timing. Uh, while uh, participating in something, while uh, raising your hand during giving the answer in the classroom, you should find out the perfect time when you should give your answer and tell your answer and, and uh, you should get the maximum uh, impact. So these are a few things which a teacher can teach while teaching in the classroom and the student can learn very easily. And for the parents, if we talk about that, uh, parents can grow up their children in the home and they should spend more and more time with their children. Nowadays, we can see a lack of time they are spending uh, with their children. I would like to tell and request all the parents, all the, all the viewers, please spend more and more time with your children and, and listen to them if they are facing any kind of difficulties in life. They would like to express sometimes, but you are not that, uh, 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 I mean, you are not giving time to them. They're not getting you. So please spend time and and give them uh, motivation, how they can improve their life and these things. Uh, continue, you can uh, contact with uh, the class teachers and the school teachers and subject teachers. If you are having good communication with the teachers uh, of their school, then that would be helpful for the child. If the teacher and the parent both are communicating with each other, then the, it will be very easy for the child to um, improve himself or herself. And then we will find out uh, what are the problems this child is going through? So all these things are very important. The role of the parents, the role of the teachers uh, to develop uh, the assertive uh, communication among the children. This is very uh, helpful. Uh, so uh, this plays a very important role in a child's life. Ma'am, thank you. Of course, ma'am. Thank you so much for sharing those uh, details with us about the responsibilities of the parents, of the teachers, of our guides. And so to say, we have around two to three minutes left in the conversation. So, Sarjubala, ma'am, we would like to have your summarization and concluding remarks for our conversation on assertiveness. So, as we say that, it is an important skill through which uh, the next slide. So, through which a child will be, you know, living a proper life with a proper decision, being confident in hand self-esteem. These are the byproducts of assertiveness. And what they have to remember is you do not live in isolation. My dear adolescents, my dear adolescents, friends, you don't live in isolation. Your action impact everyone. And it is your right to express yourself with dignity while being respectful, that is very important. You have an integrity, you have dignity, but at the same time, you should be respectful to the, to the other. You are in control of your behavior alone, not the other's behavior. So don't bother much about how people, other people will be reacting on your, on your messages or on your communication. Your response in a situation must be guided by ascertaining your rights and responsibility. It is not only you seeking your rights, but you have the responsibility to take responsibility in the communication or in the project or in the plan which you have thought for. That is very, very important. And being assertive is not a matter of, is just a matter of practicing communication skill in and having the right inner attitude. Right inner attitude is something which is going to be reflected in your assertive messages which comes forward and their friends be an active listener until and unless you listen to the other's viewpoint you won't be able to understand the message clearly be an active listener so inflection in your voice displays sincerity that is something very very important so with all these things you will be able to move forward that is all uh, thank you for sharing this beautiful message with all our viewers through this platform on why assertiveness is so important in our lives. It develops active learning at the same time. It also inculcates the emotional intelligence within us. And above all, I believe that a practicing acceptance, no matter what, is very, very important. And somehow it also gives us the liberty to express ourselves, to say our thoughts loud and clear enough with each and every one without segregating between anyone. So thank you so much, Sarju Bala, ma'am, for your important you. inputs. And uh, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Sudeb, ma'am, for being with us in the conversation, highlighting these details for everyone. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you to all the viewers you, who have connected with NCRT for this particular Sahiyok session. It's around 5.30 p.m. So it's time to wrap up this conversation, but I'm pretty sure that you have learned a lot 
to the skills of assertiveness and whatever main points have been discussed in the session kindly note them down on a piece of paper and try practicing it every day and let us know how you feel about it how it has changed or being a change maker in your life so all the viewers i am wrapping this conversation but stay connected to ncert official and keep watching e with their channels because we have so many sessions for all our viewers you can also watch the repeat telecast or the repeat videos of our today's session in case if you have missed any one of them stay connected and keep watching our channels namaskar